Okay, hey Patters, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the world of Barbie. I got my Barbie Olipop here, peaches and cream. It is what I like Olipop. It's like fiber enriched juice, carbonated juice. It's good for uh, going to the bathroom, let me tell you. So, outside of being a Barbie fanboy, we're talking Rob Liefeld today. Today's original video, and I'll drop this at another time. I might re-record it. I randomly encountered right here. Let me grab it. This issue of Snake Eyes. I, my local comic shop was closing down. I threw this in my giant stack because everything was like 70% off. Here in Philadelphia, PA, by the way. And the fight scenes, because there's two of them in here, it, it kind of enraged me. Because Rob Liefeld draws one pose and he frames it in so many different ways. When you're reading it, the reader is tricked. But there's no re-readability. And I feel like comic books, they're disposable. But the modern comic books, right? Like, we're spending so much money for modern comics. We're not getting much for that, like, value exchange. So comic books should kind of go from being... Read one time, thrown away, to re-readable. You have to be able to read it, read it, read it. So what should we, you know, how do we fill this gap? More panels, more pages, more story, more captions, more word bullies. Hollywood, Hollywood has already done this, and a lot of you don't even realize it. This is why every single blockbuster now is two hours, 2.5, three hours long, three hours plus. Like, you know, the original pitch for that really Scott Napoleon movie was four hours. Uh, we're seeing it with Rebel Moon right now. The reason is that because, you know, the more, the more you add to your story, the more the reader is going to get engaged and get re-engaged and talk about it and so on and so forth. I feel like even for Rebel Moon, that's worked. I know some of you don't agree with that. So how does all this relate to Rob Liefeld? So we try and be positive. We don't always try and be negative. I was I did a video where I tore down this issue because the value it subtracts. But then I realized something. So I went to Youngblood issue three and Rob Liefeld's comeback issue, but it's really Young Blood issue six where he had, you know, a little bit of a long delay. He left comics, took him a little bit too long to, to come back. And we're talking right now, with the help of these two Young Blood issues, the Rob Liefeld method. There's a method he has when he introduces a character and a story that I do feel like is lost. But it also lends itself to adding more meat to the books. What we have here is someone not following their own advice, not following their own methods. I feel all of you out there that are creating books, that are actively thinking about it, that actively want to do it. You guys have to follow this advice, period. So let's just hit that drawing table. I want to show you what I mean. And then I, I guess I guess we're done for the day. EK Pers, <laughs> what's up? Subscribe, support, leave a comment, guys. Uh, in this video, if I am really off key. You have to let me know. Let me know in the comments. And yes, I will respond. I know I'm behind. But say hello to Crypt. He's the mascot of this table. Let me get some of my own work out of the way. This is a free comic that I, I've been chipping away at. And it's very abstract. It's a very abstract story. But this is my production method. See? Like we... I have all the pages ready to go, so I can just pick them up and work on them when I'm on the phone and so on and so forth. So what is the Rob Liefeld trope? What is this method that gets people fired up for comics? Now, we're not criticizing Rob Liefeld's uh, social media personality. We're not talking about his revisionist podcast or even his art style and accurate anatomy. 
just for the record, I have always loved Rob Liefeld's style. I just like it. And we can all move on from it. Youngblood issue 3. So, little Timmy goes into the comic shop. Sees Youngblood 3, right? It's $2.50. I feel like already at the time, this is overpriced. But, yeah, maybe the book's flipped over. And we see the Enter Supreme. First appearance of Supreme here, right? And we get this great, like, hey, we're shocked. This is almost him riffing on his his new mutants 98 cover the first appearance of deadpool but let's just say you're timmy and you know you crack this open and look at look at what you get right away you get bad rock you get a photon card not only do you get supreme but you get heavy metal his cohorts and you just might flip through this and we have look one two three four five like six seven eight nine like, nine new heroes and villains. Two new human characters. Right? And everyone's just showing off their powers. We got a little A-Train speed guy here. We got a little morpher guy here. He's he's morphing into a crab dude, into a bull. And then, boom. Like, Supreme's coming. That's exciting. But let's just say, you know, little Timmy buys this end, and he starts to flip through it, and it's like, wow. Like, Riptide, she's sexy, she's cool. And like, back in the day, this this was hotness. But we get combat, and we also get this relationship between combat and Photon, right? They're, they're alien rivals, but they're on the Youngblood team, okay? I don't know, it's complicated. And then it's like, boom, Prophet's bloody. Prophets fighting these giant robot things. It's like, oh my god, the young blood team, more blood. So we get like blood and blood. And then it's like, okay, the guys we like, Shaft and Bad Rock. And we got Brahma here, right? He's he's in his little little holding cell. But then we get new characters, right? We get another look, one, two, new like new characters. Three new characters. This, this, I forget her name. She looks cool. You get young blood breaking through glass, right? And they fight the girl. They fight her. You get shaft with the sword, more blood, right? So already, and we get to four with, uh, and now they're, they're five, right? Because they have their little breakout partner. Gage, always a great design with the red face. We get die hard. And then it's like, boom, <laughs> blood strike. One, two, three, four, five new. So already, do you guys see the message? How many new characters and ideas are jammed into Young Blood 3? I go to Young Blood 3 more than Young Blood 1 and 2 just because I feel like the story is a little bit more connective, cohesive, a little bit better. You can see, and I hate this term, it flows better. But let's get into his, like, really his comeback. And his comeback is, is just, you're like, okay, who's that? We have Bad Rock in the new costume. We have Vogue in the new costume. Effectively, he's reskinning the characters, reselling the characters. We got Shaft with some new armaments. But then, you know, boom, little Timmy spends now $3.50. <gasps> the pricing. But it's like, in two seconds, you're like, whoa, that dude, like, he kind of looks like Cable, I think. He's on the Akira bike. But it's, you're like, this is a new character. And, and maybe, is this a new character? We don't know yet. And we get into combat. He's in new armor. And who's this guy? That's Dutch. We get Bad Rock. We get Graves here. He's critical. But then it's like, you're like, wait, what is happening? Young Blood of Tomorrow. Night Saber, Die Hard 2, Troll. Three new characters. Four including Graves. And then we have the, the Brotherhood of Man. The new villains, which these guys amazingly underutilized in Extreme. I know they did Extreme Prejudice, a crossover involving these guys. They didn't quite 
hit it home with, with that, but what a great concept. But another new idea. So in Bob Liefeld's comeback issue, we just get more and more characters. So this is the one I ended up with. I didn't want to read it. I I didn't fully read this. And it's mostly because the story fell, it fell off. Now we're at $5. But in two seconds, we have two characters from the G.I. Joe universe that we've never seen before. So already we're like, okay, like, that's kind of cool. Maybe this guy's like Thor. But then we have this chick. And you're like, who's she? And then it's just Snake Eyes and Scarlet. But boom. New character. So they fight. And it's like he fights this guy. Uh, nice sequence here. Nice like four or five panel sequence of getting this guy off the cliff. He falls maybe to his death. We all know. But then, okay. After he's done with this dude, it's this chick. It's like, all right, like another new ninja character. Awesome. And then you, we see Snake Eyes, like he's skinning himself a little here, right? He's like losing. I would bring you through the story, but I didn't read this. But then it's like, boom, Storm Shadow sh shows up. Has He somehow, you know, like makes um, Scarlet fall asleep or some crap. I don't know. Okay, but then it's like, boom. We're at, like, present day. This is a new character. New character here. New character here. Snake Eyes is red. Like, what is what is happening? Then we get this guy, right? He's back with Snake Eyes. And then we get this. Like, that's maybe another new character. So, we in a very short time, Liefeld just gives us a lot of characters, ideas, and concepts. The criticism is really the meat like, between, like, not the meat, the membrane. Like, the membrane between the panels, between the pages, within the dialogue, within the captions. Of pulling us more into the story. The Rob Liefeld method was way more effective when he was kind of on, like, stemming from his New Mutants run. Stemming from his X-Force run. And still kind of having... Like, some of that power, right? Some of that, you know, like, awesome powers. The mojo. And he carried it for a while. But when his, like, faculties and his eyesight and his health kind of start to dip. And his energy level starts to dip because he's getting older. We get books that are unsatisfying reads. And that's really what this was to me. But these books, you can really read them and reread them. And have fun with them. But I feel like, right, getting back to that 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 comparison with modern Hollywood is, you know, Snake Eyes Dead Game needs more body, needs more meat, period. For $5, this book should be, I'm not joking, AK Powers, this book should be about this thick for 5 bucks. <sighs> but a little bit of the Liefeld method, not bashing him, but showcasing how he got to where he is right now.